One of the things that we're interested in, in examining here in the salt marsh is the effect of uh, these periwinkle snails that are really abundant, usually along the water's edge, on the spartina, the cord grass. And one thing we've noticed in a lot of the marshes here in St. Joe Bay and also elsewhere in the Panhandle is that needle rush, which is typically a, a taller marsh plant that grows farther away from the water's edge, actually often occurs mixed in with the spartina in kind of the snail zone. And so we were interested in finding out what impact the needle rush has on the interaction between the cord grass and the snails. And in particular, we noticed that when needle rush is um, growing next to cord grass, the cord grass tends to be taller and look healthier than when it's just cord grass by itself. And so one of our hypotheses or ideas um, explaining that is that perhaps the snails um, spend time on the needle rush and therefore don't graze as much of the cord grass and thereby the needle rush kind of facilitates or benefits the cord grass. So we currently have some experiments to test this idea and make sure that it's not just some environmental factor. Maybe the, the cord grass and the needle rush are just growing in an environment that is better for both of them and that's why the cord grass looks better. You'll notice from the footage that the snails all have uh, paint on them, fingernail polish. Um, that's just so that we can identify the snails that we have added to these cages from ones that may occur there naturally. Because what we're doing is we're, we have cages that have the two plant species together. Some of them have snails and some of them don't have snails, and that way we can look at the impact of snails. But we also have some cages where we have planted cord grass in a patch that did have needle rush, but then we clip all of the neighboring plants. In this way, we can look at whether cord grass just does better in the needle rush environment, um, independent of the fact that the needle rush is there, or does it really need those needle rush neighbors um, to, to get this benefit? And so all of these cages, it's called interspersion. They're kind of mixed in together because if you don't do that, then you run into the problem of you may get an effect simply because the area over here is better than the area over here and you don't want all your cages that are similar in one area. Um, you really need them mixed up so you kind of um, spread out over that natural variation. And then you can kind of get a sense of whether the pattern you're interested in is strong enough to, to show up across that uh, natural gradient. Sail on the Florida breeze through the clear placid sea.